So I've just been watching back this chat that I had with a mate, Jamison Philippi from America, that I haven't seen in quite a long time, uh, which I plan to pretty soon actually, which is exciting. But we got into a pretty deep chat for this past video that I just uploaded and we dived into a few concepts and the chat ended up being like 30 minutes long or something. So I decided to make it its own little video uh, and we touch on love, we touch on mental health and male loneliness as well. Um, so there is some really interesting insights in there that might be of some help to some people. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the chat. Yeah, Please. so dude, like this this video, it's um, it's pretty much like it's going to be titled this, right? It's going to be titled The Power of Being Alone and How Solitude Can Change Your Life. Because I think the idea of it is like today's world and society, I feel like we are overstimulated in terms of interaction with people online, mm -hmm. like kind of like what we're doing right now. Or like we have access to so many people at the touch, you know, at our fingertips and we can watch all these videos of people on YouTube and almost feel like we have this relationship or almost like a friendship with them. Um, when in reality, we kind of, I think we're being pushed more obviously toward, towards this digital um, communication, communication where we, don't do it as much in real life. And I just feel like the antidote to people who may be suffering with such feelings of loneliness because of mm. this um, is to actually spend time alone with yourself and your thoughts and, and learn yeah. to cultivate the state of being alone um, that people often call solitude mm -hmm. instead of feeling lonely. Um, it's almost a way to learn to be okay with yourself. And, and um, I guess I just wanted to, uh, ask you about your experience with that because I I know that you've um, struggled with it before in your life and it seems like it's a big issue especially for males uh, male loneliness seems to be mm -hmm. a very big issue in the world today and I guess I just wanted yeah to just hear your perspective on that yeah definitely man um yeah gr growing up like I didn't I never had um a healthy family life like you know two-parent household you know, we sat around the dinner table and, you know, ate dinner together and, you know, like we're a family unit. Um, I had a really, really crazy, you know, just unhealthy, colorful childhood. Um, uh, my dad, you know, wasn't in the picture. And then my mom was in multiple abusive relationships. So it was just, you know, a lot of domestic violence and just really, really, just really bad, just sad th things that kids shouldn't see. So I always grew mm. up lonely even though I live with my mother I was always a very lonely depressed kid just from seeing all the things I've seen and then you know growing up I you know I finally grew up and you know in and out of drug rehab and stuff I got sober and then you kind of have that thing where it's like you're still not happy and you finally realize like it's okay I have to walk away from I want to change and I want to grow and I want to be a better happier person but I need to walk away from the people that had been in my life the longest you know your parents or your mother your father you know relationships um and i've always been one of those people too that has gone from relationship to relationship thinking that happiness is the next relationship mm. and it's not mm. yeah it's, it's funny not. it's funny you bring that up because um the like it almost seems like that's what a lot of people do like in in search of happiness is to to cling on to people um and all, and almost outsource their happiness to someone else right rather mm -hmm. than taking a step back and finding that within yourself because i i believe that we can find that in ourselves right we definitely can 100% 100% um and you know years and years and years of just living that way you finally realize like you know the common denominator in all these problems are yourself so I walked away from, you know, a relationship from my family and I literally, you know, I, I do Amazon for a living and I literally traveled around the country for a couple of years for the most part, you know, and I went through a huge, you know, transition of loneliness because I walked away from a toxic lifestyle and then years, you know, I was, on, I was alone for the most part for years on the road traveling and you know, every holiday, you'd see all the families together for Thanksgiving and for New Year's and Christmas and birthdays. And it was really hard, 
being alone for that, you know, seeing everybody so happy, you know, on the holidays and I'm in a hotel by myself drinking a bottle of wine, you know, on Christmas or something, you know, and, you know, that loneliness helped birth, you know, a new transition. And it took many years of healing and coaching and, you know, self, you know, like finding myself, finding self-worth, you know, um, and finding that self-love to a point where it was like a blessing to be alone. Like I actually loved being alone. I had at, you know, a couple of years ago after all this healing, I had no desire to be in a relationship. I had no desire to even need or want a family. Like I found happiness being alone and I got to a point where it was actually healthy and I was able to work on myself, focus on myself. And I got to the point where it's like, would you want to be in a miserable relationship? You know, people look at it as like, oh, I'm alone. I'm lonely. And it's like, you can look at it that way, but it's like, do you want to look at it as you're in a miserable relationship or you're free? You know, completely different opposite ends of the spectrum. Free sounds so invigorating, so amazing. Mm. And it's like people look at and it as And I remember like, on our, sorry to interrupt you, but I remember on our different. last chat we had a few days ago, we were talking about this exact subject and I kind of was regretting I didn't record it because it was such fire content that you're spitting, <laughs> but you brought up the idea of freedom and mm -hmm. I'd love if you could dive a bit further into that because I feel like it does grant you this, this freedom that we, we may not even see, as you were saying, like it's, it's hard to see it like that sometimes when you're caught up in those thoughts of, Oh, I'm all alone. Like mm -hmm. you, you almost don't give you, yourself the opportunity to experience that freedom. Yes. And experiencing that true freedom through the through the loneliness like i was able to find true genuine happiness and self-worth self-love and i was able to i met i can say you know for the for the last couple of years of my life i'm for the first time i'm at peace and i had to go through that to get to where i'm at peace and i know like you said we had talked about this a couple of days ago and we didn't record it you know, and I had mentioned I was at a wedding and, uh, you know, a friend of mine was like, he was a little tipsy and he came up to me at the wedding and he was like, you know, he, he had a just sad look on his face and he was just kind of like, you know, I'm, you know, kind of came across the lines of like, I'm lonely, you know, I wish I had somebody. And then the exact same thing I said, would you rather be in a miserable relationship or would you rather be free? And he kind of just gave me a look and then he walked away. I don't know if that resonated with him. I don't know if that connected. He was drunk, you know, but that's the truth. Like so many people think they have to be in a relationship to be happy. And it's like, no, find happiness mm. being alone. Like it, mm. it's such a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be negative. Like, oh, I'm alone. I'm lonely. No, you're free. You do what you want. Like that, how does that not sound amazing to people? I don't ever, I will never understand being like free. How many people would say I'm free? And like mean it, like even saying that, I just feel fucking amazing. Just like even be able to say it. and and going through the, all of that, I was able to you know attract a great a good mate, you know. And I'm in a relationship now for two and a half years, but the thing is, I still feel I still feel free. And I've never been in a relationship where I've ever felt free. I've always felt trapped. I've always felt I was in a cage. I always felt smothered. I always felt they were trying to control me or vice versa, or they were trying to like, you know, smother me with just toxic love that the second they let their arms go, it was gone. And I wanted to run. Mm. And it, there's this idea that um, I'm reading this book by Jay Shetty uh, called Eight Rules of Love. Mm. And the first rule or the, one of the points, the early points he brings up in that book is um, solitude as the beginning of love. Now, mm. I think this really resonates with what you're saying is like, it seems like you spent some time that that time when you were alone to cultivate a relationship with yourself mm -hmm. where you, where you felt comfortable and okay being alone with your thoughts and who, and just spending time with yourself that it almost feels like it's a, uh, it sort of helps you right now in your relationship, right? A hundred percent. Yes. I'm a, I'm a super firm believer in that you know, this is, I know we're kind of going a little bit off topic here, but like when you're in a relationship, you need to love that person order, or you need to love that person and where they still feel free. 
you know, allow that person to feel free and still love them. And like, you'll have a better bond, a better relationship, a better connection, you know? And I know we, we, we there's another quick, quick little point I'll, I'll touch on is that we talked about this, like when I used to see all these people at Christmas time, opening gifts, families, kids, you know, pets around the Christmas tree. And it's like, uh, like, I, I, you know, obviously I can't put a percentage on it, but half these motherfuckers probably ain't even happy. How many people smile for the camera, but they're not truly happy? And I felt I was missing out. But it's like, half these motherfuckers are probably arguing and toxic, you know, this and that and family gossip and this and blah, 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 did this to this person and this person. They don't talk half the year, but they're only together because it's Christmas and we're family. And it's like, mm. why, you know, like, why force it? I, why put yourself mm. into that crap when it doesn't need to be that way? It's a very interesting point. And I feel like, Almost like going back to an earlier point, like society almost puts this almost stigma on people who are alone. You know, you see it in movies all the time, like the Joker character or like, you know, those 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 villainous characters who are always alone. Mm -hmm. And it almost seems like society just has this automatic um, idea that anyone who's alone is, is a loner, that word loner, or they're just, there's something wrong with them. Exactly. And it's, it's sad. And I wish there was a you know, we could that could change because it's like think of the holidays of all the people that are alone and how high the suicide rate is around the holidays, mm. you know, and people mm. do that because they probably feel alone, you know. So true, yeah. So true. It's interesting as well because um, this Christmas was the first time I spent alone by myself. I did it as like a challenge. I was like, all right, so I'm just gonna like. I'm going to get this house sit. I'm just going to sit a house. I mean, I looked after, I don't have dogs. So I had three guinea pigs to look after. So they kept me company. <laughs> but like, I, I'd sort of use it as a challenge. And now I'm sort of, yeah, sort of, Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Like, yeah. Interesting you said that as well. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for that, bro. I think there's some fire in there. Um, do you think there's anything else we can cover on, on this subject that, that would help people? Because like some of the ideas that I'm raising in this video touches on what you said in terms of the transformation because one of the, mm -hmm. the premises, the principles is self-transformation. So when we spend time alone, it almost gives us that opportunity to transform ourselves and actually focus on the things that we are you know, really curious about and we can open up to those and, and start learning about new things that we're passionate about. And it almost leads into this self-transformative process where we... Um, are giving ourselves enough time to, you know, engage in these things that we love, that we almost cultivate this, this uh, sense of our true self. Like we actually sort of, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Um, I yeah, there's a couple things I feel that kind of connect with this, and I mean, you can, I mean, you can put it in the video or take it out if it if it flows. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say one. This now, this is I think is truly what helped me personally not feel lonely and I don't know how much I, you know my story is like back in 2018 I was in a really really toxic relationship and I felt miserable and alone while I was in the relationship and then once we parted ways um you know it was it was it was rough you know I had to go to court get a restraining order and I was even more alone afterwards it was like I missed the toxicity of the relationship and, you know, I went through this whole thing of, you know, self-worth. I went to a Tony Robbins event. And after the event, you know, I was ready to check out. And um, I drove to the George Washington Bridge, you know, deciding I was going to jump off. But I just couldn't handle feeling alone anymore. And I knew I didn't want to die. But I didn't want to feel that. It was it's it's one of the most shitty feelings you could feel mm. is feeling so hurt. And so you feel so shitty and it's almost numb where you don't even feel anything. And it's mm. such a, and, and, you know, I mean, you know, I hired uh, Josh, you know, that to coach me after that. I told him everything that was happening. It's like, I don't want this anymore. I am willing to dive in and jump in and do whatever it takes. And um, another buddy of mine, Janae, he recommended a book to me that truly transformed my life. I think it, besides like, you know, the Bible, this book has had the most influence on my life ever. 
and it's called um, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends on It. Mm. And the premise That's a of good title. Book, it is an amazing book. Literally, it's, I have the audio book. It's an hour and like 19 minutes long. But he teaches you all these different ways to learn how to love yourself. But he has this little thing, a little mini exercise in the thing where he's like, literally 500 times today, I want you to say, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. Just all day long is all you're saying. And after like a, a few days of doing that, I probably said it a thousand times. It slowly started to click to where it became natural to love myself. And, you know, after a couple of months, I was able to look yeah. in the mirror and be like, I truly love myself. I was happy yeah. with the human I saw in the mirror for the first time in my life. Yeah. Um, and I think truly that that's a thing where we lack, you know, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How many people truly can say, I love myself? It's interesting because I feel like, and I'm making generalizations here, but example, social media, maybe it's a problem, maybe it's not. I don't know. But I feel like it. we're outsourcing our love to other people when we're using platforms like social media where we're putting up photos and, and seeing how many likes we get are these people going to approve of me and when we don't get that we feel that and then also yeah I feel like being alone again and spending time on yourself sort of brings you away from that ecosystem where you're giving that love back to yourself mm -hmm. 100 percent 100 percent and this is definitely, it's definitely not going to be solved on social media. You know, getting likes and looking for validation is not going to solve anything. I went through that phase two before all of this, mm. where I posted the most happiest, amazing photos on Facebook, traveling the country, eating food, traveling to Vegas, traveling to New York, going to Sacramento, going to, you know, going, going to San Francisco, going to Los Angeles, just living a dream, you know, the dream. And I was fucking miserable. I wanted to blow my brains out. I, I hated life. But I felt I had to keep up this image of this happy, positive, motivational thing. And it wasn't. It was literally all looking for validation. All of it. And it's so hard sometimes, I find, like, when I use those platforms, like, it's really hard not to fall into that that uh, trap or that train of thought of, oh, that person's better than me. And you, and you make that comparison. It's almost like it just happens because I guess we're just built that way to make comparisons like that. But how do you really know, you know, how these people's lives actually are? Like, it's hard, like, right? We all have our struggles and stuff, but it seems like social media just, like, shows the good, the highlight reels. and Exactly. You never see somebody take a picture, a family photo, a vacation photo when they're miserable. Mm. You know, nobody posts the shitty times. They just post that small sliver of happiness. How many people, how many relationships I've seen over the years where it's like, the couple smiling and the captions like king and queen but then mm -hmm. they're like cheating on each other outside of the picture and like you know and in a, in a, they're both abusing each other mentally or physically and you know there's holes in the walls at home but on mm -hmm. facebook they're king and queen you know that's become all yeah. too often a, a problem you know there's um there's another idea as well that I'd like to talk to you about. It's called introjected presence. So mm -hmm. what this means is essentially when we spend time alone, we cultivate this uh, intimacy, intimacy sensation, almost like a poet may fall in love with the process and feel like, you know, like the muse, like, or mm -hmm. like some, a writer would just loves writing. Um, so I think like, being alone, like spending time alone helps us cultivate that love for our passion. And I kind of touched on this already, I think, but I guess like what's sort of your experience with that? Like when you spent those moments alone, did you have something that you could engage in that could help you sort of almost forget about the loneliness? Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, I used a lot, you know, when I was lonely, I, I, I dived a lot into audiobooks and self-development and, you know, working with my coach and like I was doing positive things to heal, but I was still extremely lonely for a while until I was able to heal. And it was very hard for me. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to read a book. I didn't want to work out. I didn't want to eat healthy. I had to like force myself to do it because I knew if I continued to do that, there would be light at the end of the tunnel where I would get to that point where it would snap. And I'm like, I'm happy. Mm. And so it, it's not easy, you know, there's so many different factors 
what can cause loneliness. I mean, I, you know, if we could talk, we could make a whole nother video on this, but I think a lot is, you know, the food we eat. There's not a lot of healthy stuff in so the majority of the foods we're eating, which I feel causes a lot of mental illness and, or, or it can increase or enhance mental illness, mm. you know, you know, and I mean, like I said, that's, that's, that's a whole nother video, but you know, mm. I, I think, you know, the, I, Ooh, I truly, um... yeah, I, I, I got better when I started juicing and eating organic and, you know, juicing raw vegetables and just, you know, eating all that true healthy greens, like over a few month mm. period, I was able to help, you know, remove some toxins from my body, mental, physical, whatever, and find that, you know, balance mm -hmm. of happiness. Bro, here's another idea I have because my next video is like it's around that concept of um, doing hard things like to, to live a better life. And mm -hmm. like when you brought up that idea of um, like eating bad foods or um, it, it made me think about like the the like I'm reading a book called The Comfort Crisis and the, and the video is going to be around that sort of idea. And the idea there is that we live in a world today where it almost seems like our life is really cushy. Like mm -hmm. living in a modern era, we, we, we drive a car around, we don't walk or like, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, um, we live in a, a, a temperature controlled environments um, and everything's so cushy that it's almost taking away this primal survival desire. If mm -hmm. that's how you could describe it, where, you know, when we didn't have these things, we were out in nature and we were, um, we had purpose and, um, you know, and, and a connection to the land. And we had like this primordial force underneath us to sort of drive us forward. Like we, I feel like that, that um, addresses like a potential solution or one way that we could look at approaching that problem is through um, that idea of the comfort crisis where we could potentially seek to do hard things in our lives that mm -hmm. um, almost builds character or, or um, brings us back to the way we used to live where things yeah. weren't as easy, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's this idea called the Masogi, which is a Japanese concept. And it is essentially um, this ritual they had in Japan hundreds and hundreds of years ago where they would uh, sit or stand under a, a waterfall. And mm -hmm. it was almost like this purification process where, and obviously it was cold water as well. So, and that's another idea as well as jumping in cold water is yeah. a, is a, is one of the means to sort of battle with this um, and, and build up that mental toughness in a, in a way, You're almost going, you know, to like the stuff like David Goggins teaches, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of philosophy on life. Um, but I guess, yeah, like what's sort of your opinion on all that? Yeah, no, man, I, I do. I do like that stuff, how you're saying, how the, you know, the Japanese thing of just, you know, putting yourself in the challenging situations of the cold world. That's something I definitely want to do. And I totally agree with that. You know, you know, how many people do we know that have committed suicide? Like it's, it's insane. Is it, is it a lack of purpose? Is that what it is? Do you think like we, we, cause I, I feel honestly, like if I'm go, going to go into my personal experience with all of this, like the moments where I felt lonely or I felt like, you know, I have, honestly don't want to be around here anymore is because like I've fallen off the course and I've lost like direction in life, right? Where I don't have this greater purpose or a greater meaning, mm -hmm. whether there's any meaning to life or not, that's not the question. It's more so just actually creating or constructing some kind of meaning for yourself. So it feels like you have some direction in life, you know? Yeah. Cause 100%. when, when I think about what I'm doing now and like, and I'm really engaged in making these videos and stuff and I'm um, working on my business and that, and it's just like, like there's no time to feel depressed because like I'm just going after it. You know what I mean? Yeah. In a healthy way, of course, not like this toxic hustle culture, but like, you know yeah. what I mean? hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I yeah. Think a lot of people lack purpose, you know, just mm. like a lot of people just exist. It's like uh, something that Tony Robbins says is that um, he calls it no man's land where it's like, you're not really happy, but you're not unhappy enough to do anything about it. Mm. Yeah, I like and that. I feel that that's a lot of people you know a lot of people are just like the hamster on the wheel they get up they go to work they come home they watch Netflix they eat junk food they play video games comfortably they, numb yep you go to bed repeat that cycle 40 years you know mm. 
and it's 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 sad definitely yeah it's definitely sad so yeah yeah mm -hmm. definitely man yeah what do you what do you reckon bro thanks for that i think touched on a few subjects there that's good um, yeah definitely man yeah if you want to do anything else i feel else, like i feel like we got some of yeah for sure I feel like we got some of your passion there from from that last yeah, call about yeah, it. Man, like you're yeah, really man. getting into it. Um, yeah, I'm man, sure I can get some snippets there and use that. Yeah, so for thanks sure. for that. Definitely. Yeah. Man, Is there yeah. anything else you wanted to to touch on there? Um, no, that's pretty good. I mean, we can definitely dive dive different directions in this stuff. Like, I mean, I definitely, I really like talking about like healthy relationships and things men can do to like you mm. know heal and which because ultimately is like you know kind of stems along with the whole loneliness thing is that you know a lot of people probably either lack connection with other humans or they feel left out or they feel that you know they feel alone because they don't have a connection with someone and they assume they have to have that relationship to feel that connection mm -hmm. and then a lot of men that lack that connection they get in a relationship and they smother them with overly love which causes that other person to leave um mm -hmm. and you know once I got into, you know, the relationship I'm in now, you know, I, 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 do, I approach this relationship completely opposite to any other relationship I've been in, but I also approach this relationship almost completely the opposite to everybody else's relationship. And mm. we have this thing, you know, I'm sure you've heard this stupid cliche thing is happy wife, happy life. And I think that's the dumbest fucking thing I ever heard in my life. Because mm, in in in, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but like it feels like when you're pursuing to make someone happy like that, you are. That's when you are smothering them, right? You're sort of focus on them too much rather than focusing on yourself and looking after mm -hmm. yourself first. A hundred percent. Yep. And I, and I feel you know as a man, this is you know the way I live my life. I feel it's a man's job to chase excellence, not women. Mm. And when you do that, that opens yourself up to actually attract good quality women you know your purpose should be your purpose mm. over the you know over the relationship um and i live you know the relationship i'm in now i kind of like that stupid saying happy wife happy life i kind of have a different thing where it's happy me happy we you know mm. uh and in i mean this in the most selfish way possible i come first and I mean that is that I have to take care of me, health, wealth, you know, career path, you know, education, finances, you know, health, fitness, mental health, just, you know, all those things I need to do me first. I have to put into me. I want my gas tank to be 100% full because I can't mm. give to you if I'm running on fumes. And if my gas tank is full, that means I can give 100% to you in this relationship. And I guarantee you, our relationship will thrive if we both come to the relationship that way. I don't want her to put me first. I want her to put her first. Because if she's full and happy, then mm. and I'm full and happy, our relation both if every both people it's give, like, both people have, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I was just about to say it's like both of you are working on your own thing, pulling yourselves both up, then collectively you're going up. Well. Exactly. And it, it, collectively, you will be more happier. You will have a better chance of succeeding in that relationship. If you both are full and nourishing, just full of life. And, you know, like as men, we're taught the stupid happy wife, happy life. So basically, we're supposed to put everything that we want on hold to please her. And then if she's not happy, we have to even do double time to make her happy. Like, no, that's the fucking dumbest shit I ever heard. Like you're as a man, your job should be to fulfill your purpose in life. And that's, you know, that's just that. I mean, that's the way I live my life. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm in the best relationship I've ever been in my entire life by living, you know, these ways and doing these things and doing, you know, the proper things that a man should do, being a leader and, you know, you know, being, you know, in control is in charge, being a leader of the relationship. And you do those things. And I feel like the woman is more likely to fall in that submissive role as a woman and play her traditional roles as a woman. You know, and I do the role, you know, traditional roles that, that a man is supposed to do, you know, be a leader, you know, and do all those other things that a man is expected to do. 
and overall you both will be happier in that relationship you know and i definitely yeah. am and, and i see so many people that aren't happy and it's like because they got it wrong you know I mean, look at every single freaking movie we've ever seen. Look at where we get where men get our 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 relationship advice. It's like mm. almost every single romantic comedy love movie, the man is over pursuing the women. He's doing all these things to get her to get her to like him, to get her to pay attention to him. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen any romantic comedies, but literally, you can just rattle them off. Hitch. Mm. Um, the one I just watched not too long ago was ten, uh, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. They go on a date the next day. This guy, dude mailed, sent her 100 roses to her job. No. That, in real life, that will never work. I guarantee you every woman that watches that movie, she's like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I would love for a man to do that. I guarantee you if a man did, did that to you, you would, find, you would probably get a restraining order. Yeah. And we've been taught everything wrong about how to attract a mate and attract a good woman. And it's not, those things are completely wrong. And I, I believe like a lot of it, I mean, again, this could go completely different topic and completely different videos. That's the reason why I think a lot of families sure. fail and why households aren't too, a two parent, you know, household anymore. And I mean, that's a bunch of other things too involved in that, but like you could go down that rabbit hole to, you know, why the family unit doesn't work anymore. Why are there so many single mothers? Why are there so many kids without fathers around? Or, you know, why are so many kids that raised in broken homes? Why do so many kids that are so likely, that are more likely to be raised like that, why are they more likely to end up in prison or commit, you know, horrible crimes? You know, they're just repeating this cycle over and over and over. And, you know, we're putting blame in the wrong direction. Oh. Some good points. But yeah, that's yeah, definitely completely different, opposite way. But uh, you know, that no, that's shit. fine. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I'm thinking about just turning this into a podcast. First Let's podcast go. episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So many good points. Um, yeah, I don't know what else we can talk about. Um, does it feel like we've touched on enough in terms um, of loneliness and? Yeah. Uh, um, it's like, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Because did you talk about um, travel and like, you did, didn't you? You touched on like how you're traveling alone, like solo travel and stuff. And yeah. Well, I did do you reckon a you could bit. go into that a little bit? Like in terms of like how you feel like that sort of helped cultivate that state of yeah, definitely. being okay yeah, yeah. by being alone? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like we were discussing earlier, um, you know, we were talking about traveling and being alone and being okay with being alone while traveling. Like, um, you know, I've done a, a ton of traveling, you know, over the last, you know, five, six years. And I used to travel to escape my home life. Like I was running from my problems. I was on the road traveling to 44 states all over the country, you know, and you know, back to what we talked about earlier is like, I was posting all this stuff on social media, like I was extremely happy. And then I wasn't, I was running from my problems. I didn't want to deal with my problems. So I was running and I was traveling. I didn't have to commit to nothing. I was on the road in a different city, different state almost every other day. So it was like, I kept moving and moving and moving. So I didn't have to stop and deal with my pain and deal with my BS that I had going on in my personal life. And, you know, after I, you know, gotten out of the relationship, I, you know, went down a dark hole, I healed, I grew, continued to grow. And then I started to travel again. And like, you get to that point, like I got to that point where I, I loved being alone. And like, I love traveling. And like, I got to the point where it's like, I was working, I'm working with my, with my coach, Josh, and like, he, he would, he'll always give me different challenges on how to grow and how to really, really push, you, push, push that edge to get you out of your comfort zone. And like, this is, you know, back when I was single and I was alone and spending a lot of time alone and working on my business and traveling alone. Like he would challenge me to go to dinner by myself and not use my phone. Because when you're not on your phone, you're left to look around and like, and, and it, it was very awkward. I went to dinner and actually- How did, make, 
Not that was about to ask you, how did that make you feel? Like going it to was, a fancy restaurant all by yourself and they're like, oh, is it just a table for one, not two? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was, it was awkward, but it, I, it was, it was. Very, Growing experience. Yes, it was, it was, it was, there was so much growth there. I sat at the table, I ordered a steak, with all the fixings, potatoes, green beans, just everything. And he was like, do not take your phone out of your pocket. Do not use your phone. Don't check the time. Don't look at that phone as an escape. Be in the moment. I lean back. I'm leaning back. I'm in my booth. I got my arms up while I'm waiting for my food. Legs all spread out. And, you know, looking around, smile on my face. You know, just kind of just chilling, enjoying myself, enjoying the moment, not feeling awkward, not looking down, not twiddling my thumbs, not balling up my straw paper to, like, look like I'm busy so I don't feel awkward I don't look weird and no one's oh my gosh are they staring at me what do they think about me oh my gosh am I a loser you know and I went through that whole process all those emotions going through your head and you know it, it was I it, it there was so much growth in that little thing and you know a little while after that he had another challenge which <laughs> I almost couldn't do it but I did it is he challenged me to go to the movies by myself and I went. That's a big one. <laughs> and I sat by myself. I ordered popcorn, milk duds, soda, the whole nine yards. I sat at the front where there's people all up behind me, and I'm alone in the movie theater. And it was it was true. It was awkward, but like when you're done, it's an invigorating experience because you're getting used to doing things by yourself, and that helps you grow. And it truly helped build my confidence. And help me feel more comfortable being alone to where I could go out and enjoy being alone. And I could go out and travel. I could fly to, you know, to Florida, to California on a, on a, on a, you know, on a plane by myself, get off and go do all these things by myself for days on end, traveling alone and actually enjoying it and embracing it. Where I could walk down, to this, down the street by myself. I could go to the beach by myself. You know, I, I, even got, I even got to the point where I started going to bars by myself. And that's you know, how awkward that is for like a grown man to go to a bar by himself on a Friday night, you know, and, and, and it felt amazing. And it, uh, it allowed me to continue to heal all the things and deal with different traumas and, you know, past BS. And it allowed me to feel comfortable in my own skin and have the confidence to go do all these things alone. Which, you know, at the end, you know, it took a couple of years of going through all that to make it feel worth it and be like, this is great. Like loneliness turned into, it, 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 it went away from loneliness to I'm free and I feel free. Mm. And I can do what I want when I like, want to do it. Like from loneliness to solitude, right? Like, Amen. I guess like solitude can be that freedom that we can mm -hmm. experience in times alone. I love it, bro. <laughs> Thanks for your yeah. input. Of course, brother. Of course. It's good to hear your story. Yeah. You got one minute left before Thank the him. thing cuts off. Let's get one more quick. Oh, that's perfect. Then. Now we're on a better, no, yeah. better thing. All right, cool. And we're that. truly happy here. Hey, like we're not putting this on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I can, man. All right, I'm going to hit stop. I love it. Quick, so 